Right now I'm in Gardner, Montana at the northern entrance to Yellowstone National Park to do something I've been dreaming about for years, and that's the gray wolves in the wild. Yellowstone National Park is one of the best places in the entire world to see gray wolves. It's one of the only places in the United States where you can catch a glimpse of them, and there is a ton of other wildlife here in America's first ever national park. It's winter right now, so I'm gonna be heading out today to track wolves, and honestly, I am just over the moon excited to bring you guys along. Okay guys, we've been in the park for about an hour. We are heading towards the, the Lamar Valley right now and we just got word that some wolves have been sighted. So we are making a beeline over there right now, hopefully gonna beat some of the other wolf watchers in the park. So the reports were correct. We actually just spotted our first pack of wolves. They're right over this hillside over here. There's about 10 of them. So the wolves we've just spotted are actually part of the Wapiti pack. There are about 17 of them out here and I have to say it's just incredible looking at them. Now they are a bit far away so we do have to see them through this scope. But one of the things that I find so interesting is that just across the hill is a pack of elk as well. So just the symbiosis of the animals together here is just pretty incredible. Wolves once roamed the Arctic tundra all the way to Mexico, but extermination programs actually led to their demise throughout the United States by the early 1900s. After wolves were removed from the ecosystem in Yellowstone, the area had decades of habitat devastation from the overabundance of elk and other species that grew to overpopulation from the removal of predators. In 1973, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service listed the Northern Rocky Mountain wolf as an endangered species. And this started a long process that eventually led to their reintroduction here in the park in 1995. Now, during a three-year recovery period, 41 wild wolves from Canada and Northern Montana were released into the park. And today there are an estimated 528 wolves in the greater Yellowstone area with around 100 here in the park. Right now we're in the Lamar Valley. As you guys can see, it is absolutely beautiful down here. Now, in the summertime and even sometimes in the winter, you can actually see tons of bison here. We're just kind of out enjoying this beautiful start to the day as the sun just came up. It is freezing out though. My eyelashes actually just froze together. So if you're coming out here, you definitely need to wear every layer you have as you guys can see, it's cold. One of the most iconic animals in Yellowstone has to be the bison. But in 1902, there were actually only about 24 bison left in Yellowstone. They were another species hunted almost to extinction by white hunters. Now today, there are just over 4,700 bison in the park. And bison, or buffalo, once roamed all over North America and numbered in the tens of millions. They were a critical species to Native American populations that actually lived here in the Yellowstone Basin for some 11,000 years before white settlers. 
But sadly, part of the big plan by the U.S. Army to rid the West of Native Americans included removing their food source. And so there was a mass slaughtering of bison and frankly, most other animals as well. One of the reasons you won't see a lot of bison outside of Yellowstone National Park or any other national parks or state parks is because bison and elk actually carry a disease called brucellosis, which can spread to livestock and actually cause stillbirth or miscarriages. Because of that, they have actually tried to keep bison within Yellowstone National Park since they've really been reintroduced there to reduce issues with ranchers. While looking for more wildlife, I heard moose might be in the area. Now, moose are the largest member of the deer family and are very well adapted to living in deep snow with those gangly long legs. They are also great swimmers and can run surprisingly fast. Now, as a kid growing up in New Hampshire, I actually saw moose quite often and one actually chased my dad across our field one summer, but I haven't actually seen one in about 20 years. so. Spotting these two males hiding in a bush was a real treat. So the Northern Range takes up just 10% of the park, but it's really the hub of wildlife, especially in the winter months, and home to the Winter Range for the largest elk herd in the park as well. The wildlife just really never ends here. We were heading back towards where we came into the park this morning and actually spotted a coyote out the car window. So much bigger than the coyotes I'm normally used to seeing in California, but just another beautiful sight here in the park. Here the light goes quickly and after spotting moose and wolves and plenty of bison it was time to head back towards Gardner. But on the way I was able to spot a coyote a couple of antelope and even some bighorn sheep. Yellowstone is a truly remarkable place. Today started off just as I hoped with seeing gray wolves, a huge pack of them out in the snow. And I have to say it was absolutely incredible. As you guys saw, the day followed with bison and elk and antelope and even a coyote. And that's not all the park has in store, but the wildlife here is incredible. You know, a couple centuries ago, this place actually rivaled the amount of animals that they have in the Serengeti with just millions of bison. Obviously all of the animal numbers have been reduced here, but it's still one of the only places in North America you can see this many animals. And I highly recommend coming here if you get the chance in winter. There are less crowds and you, if you can brave the cold, you are really afforded an absolutely unique experience unlike any other place. Just when I thought the day couldn't get any more perfect, I made it up here to the top of the Mammoth Hot Springs to catch the sunset. It is an absolutely beautiful evening. It's just been the most perfect day. And this is what you can expect for winter in Yellowstone. guys i hope you enjoyed that video of my wonderful winter day in yellowstone looking for wildlife i am just coming on here to give you guys a little bit more information about what to expect in the park what you should know what you should bring where you can stay things like that because i didn't get to cover a lot in this video i actually went out with a private guide on this trip and i was only in the park for about six and a half hours so really short and covered a ton of 
mileage in our car that day, but didn't get to get out of the car that often and hike around or do what I would normally be doing while exploring a national park. Um, unfortunately, I just didn't have time to do all that, but I really wanted to see the wolves. So I obviously got to do that and I was just so excited to get to see them right when I got into the park, but I wanted to give you guys some more information um, so that when you head to Yellowstone National Park, if you go in the winter, which I do recommend, that you have all the information that you need. So first I wanna tell you just how to get there. So Gardner, Montana is the main entrance to Yellowstone in the winter. You actually cannot access Yellowstone from Jackson Hole, um, Wyoming, which is kind of the common summer entrance to Yellowstone. You do need to fly into Bozeman or another kind of Northern city drive down to Gardner from Bozeman. It's about an hour drive. I recommend renting a car and one that has either four wheel drive or all wheel drive for the snowy roads. I should say also that the roads are actually really well plowed from Bozeman down to Gardner, but once you're in the park, they're not gonna be as clear as they are outside of the park. So either know how to drive in snow and always take it slow as well. The roads do have a good amount of salt and sand on them and we didn't skid around too much, but there were some areas where we may have almost gotten stuck if I did not have a driver that was uh, used to driving in the snow. So just make sure you prepare for that as well when you're planning your trip. And then I actually stayed in Gardner in an Airbnb. It was absolutely beautiful and it was just a few steps from the park gate and the sign to Yellowstone National Park. So it was a fantastic place to stay. It was really well appointed and pretty spacious, uh, a couple hundred dollars a night as well, but it did sleep about six people. So that's easy to split up with either your family or a little group of people as well if you're planning to head to the park. The other place that you can stay is actually the Mammoth Hot Springs Hotel. Now this is inside the park. It's about, I wanna say uh, five or six miles from the entrance and it's up on a hill. It's where the visitor center is and the park store. They do have a restaurant there and it's right next to Mammoth Hot Springs. That's the only lodging within the park in the winter unless you decide to go camping, which would be pretty cold, but I'm sure it would be a really neat experience. Now that hotel has like rooms with hot tubs that you can book, but you do need to book in advance um, as they do sell out pretty quickly. And as far as just where you can go in the park, you can only go to this really small northern section. It's about 10% of the park, and it basically skirts the border of Montana and Wyoming. It goes from Gardner over to the east to Cook City, which is a really teeny tiny town, uh, really popular for people going out snowmobiling into the park and the national forest. A couple of restaurants here, however, most of them were closed uh, when I came through the park. But this is actually where we stopped for lunch, and we also turned around here and headed back towards Gardner the way we came through the park. The other thing you need to prepare for is the cold temperatures. Now, you're not gonna be in your car the whole time, or at least I hope not, because you should definitely get out of the car, you know, walk off into the snow and, you know, look for animals. Actually, when we saw the moose, we walked across, you know, a big field to get a little bit closer to them where we could see them a little bit bigger in our scope and in my camera. So I highly recommend doing that, but you do need to be prepared. I recommend bringing, you know, snow boots. I actually wore insulated leggings with snow pants over them. I wore about three or four layers on my top. A uh, hat, obviously, gloves, like good gloves, not just like you're going to the grocery store in winter gloves. Um, if you have like those heated hand warmers and heated boot warmers, I recommend bringing those too. I will say, First thing in the morning, it's really, really cold. The whole day I was in Yellowstone, the maximum temperature was about 15 degrees. So it's really cold, and I'm talking about Fahrenheit, not Celsius. In the mornings and in the late afternoon, it is gonna get colder. It was especially cold in the morning when I saw the wolves, and I honestly had to go back to the car after about 10 minutes because I just was too cold to stand out there any longer which was unfortunate because I really wanted to see them and just stay as long as I could. 
one of the popular things to do in Yellowstone in the winter also is to snowshoe or to cross country ski. There are actually a ton of the hiking trails that are open to do this and you can have a really great chance of seeing bighorn sheep, moose, and some of the other, you know, vegetarians in the park while you're doing that. It's a really great way to see the park, but you do want to make sure you're bundled up and also wearing like sunscreen and a hat and all that, all the nine yards that you normally would wear on a hike as well. A couple of common questions also, I know a lot of people want to see Old Faithful in Yellowstone. Old Faithful actually is only accessible from the southern entrance in the winter or via snowmobile. And even from the southern entrance, it's only accessible via snow coach or snowmobile. So you can't drive to that area of the park at all in the winter. You would have to book a tour or rent a snowmobile to see that. Um, and that goes for all of the other kind of attractions and things that you might want to see that are in the southern section. That also goes for Yellowstone Lake, which is in the southern section as well. So. If you're going to Northern Yellowstone, it's all about the wildlife and Mammoth Hot Springs as well. Those are kind of the two main things to see in Northern Yellowstone. But you'll notice that in this video, I really didn't see very many people. And that's one of the benefits and the like really fantastic things about going in the winter. So I do highly recommend it. Now Yellowstone is just an amazing place for wildlife. As I said in the video, most of these animals were almost completely wiped out, almost had gone extinct in this area of the country. So it's absolutely amazing that they've been able to rebound. And now we're seeing numbers, you know, in the hundreds for some animals, but in the thousands for other others. And as far as the wolves go, we do need to continue to fight for them because just like the bison, as soon as they can, as soon as they leave the park, they can actually be killed by hunters. And wolves are actually no longer on the endangered species list. They can be openly hunted in Idaho, uh, the same as Wyoming. Montana also has hunting for wolves, not as widespread as it does in Idaho. But now that these sanctions protections have been lifted, states are able to change the hunting regulations to allow more hunting or widespread hunting of these species. So I really hope that doesn't happen. I actually did a whole video on this on Nature News. If you guys wanna check it out, you can learn a little bit more about that too. But I highly recommend going to Yellowstone in the winter. If you guys have more questions about where to stay or what to wear or what to bring, anything else about the park, drop a comment down below. And if you guys like this kind of format where I try to answer some questions that I missed in the video, let me know as well. I will see you in the next one.